a case study and I'm really keen to listen to هيبقى في اخر حاجه a closing time دلوقتي like the goodbyes اللي عملها فلوج بس انا حابه اشكر the team my team بس هقول لك كده بسرعه and we will start بعد كده في عبد الله صبري for a fantastic demo on stage Hi, can you guys hear me? Okay, so I'm going to start by introducing myself for people that don't know me. Uh, my name is Liam. Um, I studied finance and accounting in LA. And I moved to DC. I worked as a financial auditor for Congress, and then I um, decided to pursue an MBA and a Master of Science in um, Accounting uh, in Boston. And then I decided to pursue my real passion, which is consulting. And so um, that's where Kind Associates uh, comes from. And I'll let Elena introduce herself. She's my sister, and she's also my partner, and also my best friend, and also an account manager. <laughs> Hi, Anna Rana. Um, besides being her best friend and sister that has to deal with her all the time, um, I graduated, and I'm a bit far from the field, I graduated with my bachelor's in molecular genetics and biotechnology. I then uh, worked for a biotech firm um, in research regulated by the FDA. I then decided I like dealing with humans more than working with mice all day long, so I decided to pursue my master's in management specifically biotech management. Um, given my cultural background, it's very diverse, so I always felt that I have a good ability of talking to people, dealing with people, and adapting to different individuals. And that's why I joined Dream um, with Kain Associate as her account manager, since she's not really good with people. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, tell you, we're gonna keep harassing each other, so just bear with us. <laughs> and so, um, okay, I'll tell you a little bit about Kai and Associates. Can anybody, does anybody want to take a shot at what Kai stands for? Kyra. Good job. We already <laughs> told you that. <laughs> <laughs> so Kai stands for Kyra. We take a lot of pride in being Egyptian, originally Egyptian. We've never lived in Egypt, neither one of us. Um, but we do love Egypt so much. So we went for the name Kai and Associates, and this is how we introduce ourselves to any client in the States. Um, what Kai does is, like I said, it's a consulting agency, uh, mainly working in hospitality, so restaurants, bars, entertainment, um, and really other stuff too, but mainly hospitality. Uh, and our services vary, starting from financial services, business development in the early initial stages, all the way down to shipping and distribution and site planning and land use. Um, so that's a little bit about Kai. Okay, so... Today we'll be discussing um, the seven reasons why photography is really important in consulting. And as you all know, photography marketing is so unique because it varies from one product to another and from one service to another. So the first reason we think photography is crucial in consulting is um, attention, like attention grabbing. And so um, think of how many photos we've seen that went like insanely viral. And studies have actually shown that um, photos with the right visual elements can increase readers' willingness to read by 80% at the very least. And even as children, we were all attracted to photo books a lot more than we were attracted to just a regular book. And that's because it's entertaining and engaging. Now, as you grow up, you think that you're, you can read a normal book now, but really it actually gets worse. You're more attracted to seeing pictures. When you're at a restaurant, you're more attracted to a menu that has pictures and which dish looks the most appealing for you to purchase. So unintentionally, we'll find ourselves leaning towards things that create an impeccable image of an experience or product in our brains. And if we can visualize it, then we can easily convince ourselves that we actually need it. So I'm sure you're all aware of this um, dress. This went viral a few years ago. And then companies in the United States in very different industries like Dunkin' Donuts, Lego for toys, and Tide, uh, um, they all used it for their marketing campaigns. 
And as you can see up here, they all use the same concept of the black and gold, whether it's white and gold and, or black and blue. So there is the Dunkin' Donut campaign, the Tide, and the Lego. And these three marketing campaigns were actually very known at the time in the US and they made like a huge buzz because they were technically competing with each other even though they were in like absolutely different industries and had nothing to do with, with each other. So now I'll pass it down to Donald. Um, as a business, once you grab someone's attention, it's not just about their attention. You want to keep them engaged with your products and services. So I strongly believe that pictures and photographs are more enticing and more engaging to um, an individual. Um, studies have actually shown that Facebook campaigns have 65% better engagement when they're created with visuals that are pretty much created by photographers who are talented. As a person, you're never gonna wanna read like a paragraph about a product. Like, How many times have you ever looked at the product reviews or anything? So um, even on Twitter, which is usually text, tweets that have the highest engagements are the ones that are have an attachment of an image next to them. So um, I think pictures and photographs allows the viewer to relate and understand the content a little more than a huge description of your content. Um, and then I'll pass it over to Liam. <laughs> All right, so I'll talk about definition. Now that you've grabbed your consumer's attention, you have engaged them into your product, you need to actually define your product to them. So images do help people understand what the product actually is. When we're not too sure of a company, a restaurant, or a brand, or anything really, even a location that we're traveling to, the first thing we're gonna do is go on Instagram and check out their profiles or visit their website to really know what they're about. And so this will help you um, facilitate your needs to the product. Like, do I actually need this? And then you start to actually convince yourself that you do, even if you don't. This is how you waste your money too. Photos help users understand products that are they're not familiar with and they help them define um, the brands and help people visualize themselves using those products. So I'll use an example of a restaurant um, so this is content from Barton G. This is off of their official Instagram. Um, has anybody heard of Barton G at all? Okay, so Barton G is a restaurant in LA. It started in LA, eventually expanded to Miami, and it is literally always fully booked. Like you will never be able to get a reservation, so good luck, book in advance if you're going to LA. Um, I've tried it, the food is not good. It's really like, okay, like for the price you pay, you can eat that food at Cheesecake Factory. It's really not that serious. However, this is how they plate their food and they take pictures of almost everybody there. And they're really good at the way they plate their food. It is always a monstrous size of decoration. It is not a normal size. Like it's not humanly possible to eat anything that looks this big. If you order a drink at their bar, you will get an entire show with your drink. So if you're not there for spotlight, do not go there. It gets really ugly. Like they're always recording, <laughs> they're, they're always doing stuff. There's always cameras, flashes everywhere. And it's, it's expensive. It's a fine dining restaurant. It's not a regular restaurant. And it's because of the shows and the uh, creative way they plate their food. So can you go to the next page? This is just an example of a drink um, that they have. This is really how they serve their dessert. Um, the, the dollar bill one is a very famous one. I think a lot of people go there just to take a picture of that. So if you're in it for the experience, I recommend. If you're in it for the food, I do not recommend. <laughs> so now I'll send it back to Rana to talk about um, some emotional stuff. I'm not very good with that. So as a business, I've already caught your attention. I've already kept you engaged. But to keep you coming back, I need to play on a very important factor, which is our emotions. We're all humans, we're all driven by our emotions, and to keep you coming back to me, I need to create some bond with you on a personal level for you to keep coming back. And I think the best way to do it is with photographs. For example, the example we just used, Bart and Jeep. If you go the first time, you experience it, the food is horrible, you're like, I'm never coming back again. But then you go back to their Instagram or whenever they pop up again, you see the pictures, you see how amazing it is, all the colors they have and the way they photograph and pose everything and the colors, it reignites that feeling of happiness and like, oh, this is fun place, I wanna go back. And you end up going back. And then you realize it's a bad, bad place and, and so on, the circle keeps going. Um, so I strongly believe that the images are like 
it creates, uh, the photography, it creates a bond between the consumer and the product, or a bond between the consumer and the service itself being provided. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm <last number. laughs> All right, I'll talk about sales. I'm a numbers person. This is really where I belong. So, for people to feel connected to a product or service, they must be able to visualize themselves using it first. Um, a great campaign utilizes the highest quality of content, which helps our brain paint the image of actually needing that product or service, even if we don't actually need it. Uh, and humans naturally connect with pretty pictures because they feel intrigued to experience it on their own. So before you travel, you don't just pick a place because, okay, I woke up and decided to go to Tokyo. It's because you've seen people go to Tokyo and you've seen their pictures and you're like manifesting yourself into that place. You want to try it for yourself. You want to experience it. Now, really, you don't think about it when you're buying shoes, but that's really how it works. You actually think about yourself wearing that shoe and what outfit you would put it on with and where you would wear it and then, boom, buying the shoe. This is literally how it works. And for that to happen, you need good content for you to even picture yourself in that shoe. So this is why it is actually crucial for any business to utilize the highest quality of images. It's a great investment that everybody should make. And as an example, I, I'll use Lululemon. All right, so up here you see something called The Mirror by Lululemon. Anybody here familiar with Lululemon? Me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do we like Lululemon? Do we like their quality of clothes? All right, so I can attest for it myself. I love Lululemon and their clothes, but when the pandemic started, Lululemon had just started like a, a little before the pandemic, and they've really peaked. They, they're like one of the most successful companies and one of the most successful stocks to purchase in the States. This is very known over there. And so Lululemon came out with something called The Mirror. The Mirror is a mirror, if you haven't guessed it. And uh, um, it's literally a mirror, but it's like tech infused where you can actually pay a membership fee and then you get free work, uh, workouts and classes as long as you're paying the membership. But then after the pandemic, people stopped really using the membership because now we're back in the gym. So what do we do? So they took those mirrors into their stores. And now when you go to Lululemon, you can pick a product and it will like you're looking in the mirror and I'm wearing this, right? A white shirt, blue shorts. You can pick a product and it'll put it on you. So you don't get the feel of it, but you can, if you're lazy and Americans are lazy, you'll see yourself in the shirt. And so it's very easy to sell your product. And so they did that. And not only that, but they also tell you what size fits you. And it's like almost never wrong. Like I've, it's just never wrong. After Lululemon did that, a lot of other businesses started doing that. So if anybody's planning a trip to the States, I recommend to go to Abercrombie and Fitch. It's not the best, but if you go into their fitting rooms, they have the coolest fitting rooms ever now because you can do that. And not only that, you can also play with the lighting to see yourself in like different lightings. Like they literally have one for like if you're in a club and then one if you're by the beach, how does the lighting look? Like? And it like changes to what the setting is for you to see yourself in those clothes in different settings without having to actually buy it, which I think is really cool. And so this is how they use photography and other things and they've actually did great marketing campaigns for these things to get you to purchase their products and I can't lie but it's been working very well in the states now I'll pass it back to my sister so um you know we're in an era filled with technology as she just has mentioned and um I believe we all the core of humans is communication that's why everyone went crazy when we were quarantined because we couldn't communicate with each other um, so I believe that photographs and pictures allow us to communicate without really text. You don't need to put a lot of text. You don't need to, less is more, you know? And we've seen that in different talks here, for example, Shank's talk or Kukla or uh, Megan Nassad, everyone had different ways of marketing and doing their advertisements and commercials and videos. Different ways, but the common thing between them was the fact that they barely use text and at the end of the day, we were all left with a story and a smile on our faces. We all understood the message. We all kind of connected with the product without having to read or like see anything. Like Megan Nelson is all like music. Kukla was just music. Even with Shank, humor. So text is not as important, I believe, as the photograph of the visuals themselves because that's what grabs your attention and that's what makes you want to watch the commercial more than once. I mean, even as students, I mean, if I to a like a paragraph, I'm not going to even listen to what he's saying. But if there's pictures, I'm more inclined to be, you know, in time. So I really believe that the nonverbal communication that we get through 
photographs is actually what gives us the experience of the product or the service without actually being on or without actually having the product or the service. It just kind of entices you into the product. Um, and I think that's it for me. My notes are over, so I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Okay, let's do the last one. It's brand identity. So brand identities are easily established via elements a brand chooses and utilizes on a daily basis. Think of Gucci and their green. Think of Balenciaga and their weird like boot elements and Kim Kardashian and Julia Fox and all that great stuff. So it's, it's, it, your element can literally be a celebrity. It can be a picture. It could be an icon. It could be the way you type. It could be a lot of things. But starting from the logo, the color palette, the product design and packaging to the content they actually produce, the best way to communicate a brand is to use the right photos to communicate with the consumer. So a creative manager or director has the best understanding of a brand, which helps them guide the team on what kind of photography it is that they're going to utilize. And this is how normally things work. This is then used to communicate the expectations to the final production team and the actual photographer. So then we get things like the stuff Schenk comes up with, or Kukla, or Megid, or any of the other photographers um, that we've seen. They're very talented, and we've seen great things come out. And this is because they really took the time to understand what it is they have to tell their customer. And then they said it in a very different way. Like Kukla's video for Azza Fahmi was extremely heartwarming. It was incredibly cute. It was very nice. I've never been to, where was it? I've never been there, but it was it, it was a nice one. If somebody didn't hear that, <laughs> but it was it was seriously amazing. And then with Shank um, and his um, Google ads, I literally love those ads. I used to watch them all the time with my aunt in the states and laugh about them. I think they're absolutely hilarious. And so um, it's just literally simple things. And I think it just sends you a message. You tell the story, and boom, everyone's happy. I know it's not that easy for you guys, but I'm just saying. So. Um, I'll also talk about um, how um, Mo uh, Beatty said uh, during his talk today for GLC, he said that every color allows a person to express a certain emotion. So when you're building an identity of a brand, this is incredibly important to keep in mind. If your brand is lively and cute and amazing, you can't go for like darker tones. So this is, it's like you think it's easy, but it's really not. You have to actually study a lot of things about your brand and product before you overwhelm your client with visuals or elements or colors. And that's a mistake that a lot of businesses make. They think if we go like neon colors, like everybody's gonna engage. Like, no, I do, do not wanna wake up at 9 a.m. and a coffee place is blasting neon pink in my face. Like, I do not want that. Like, I don't want a neon pink cup. So it's really like forcing an aesthetic on the customer is not good. Rather, thinking about a better aesthetic for the customer is how things should go. And I'll use um, BLK water and boxed water as an example. Has anybody tried either one? Okay, no. Boxed water, did you think of it as any different than your normal water bottle? Like this one. Um, I mean, to me, I thought it was just overpriced and like, I, I didn't see the point, honestly. So why did you purchase it, do you remember? Like, no, it wasn't me, it was just around. Okay, uh, yeah. fair I, enough. I wouldn't pay for one for that. I got sure, me too, me either. <laughs> Okay. I know, I know you would. I know you would. So let me tell you let me tell you a little bit about both. Okay, so BLK water is water. It's black. That's it. That's actually it. Okay. So BLK water uses fulvic acid in their water, which makes the water black. And then box water uses paper instead of plastic, because they're sustainable. So you think that a regular person would think about, why should I spend $7 on a, on a water bottle when I can just buy it for $3 or $2 or whatever it is? People bought them, like, a lot. Like, they were everywhere. Like, he just said they were there, so I tried them. Well, that happened, like, everywhere in the States. I remember that I think I tried boxed water in, like, college, and I was like, what is that? Like, is this juice or milk cartoon? What is this? But it was actually just water. And it was something I've never seen. So BLK water is, like I said, infused with fulvic acid, which hires your pH and supposedly keeps you hydrated for longer periods of time. I can guarantee that nobody's buying it for that reason. Like, absolutely not. But people will buy it like Shen because it's for the aesthetic. He likes that stuff, so he will spend $7 on that water bottle. Not everybody's like that, but apparently it turns out a lot of people were like that. Um, another reason was the sustainability factor for boxed water. and. Um, 
Box Water turns out to be the most sustainable brand in the United States. It's 92% plant-based packaging, and so a lot of people are willing to spend the $7 to save the world. So it turns out these things were progressive and successful. <laughs> so I'll tell you, um, I'll, I'll wrap this up a little bit. So these were the seven reasons of why we think um, photography is really important in consulting. Because you don't just come up with a good brand identity, or you don't just come up with um, good color schemes or a good marketing campaign, you need to actually show them to your clients. And for you to show them to your clients, they need to connect with it. They need to visualize themselves using those products. And this is how things turn successful. So photography, like anything else in, in business, is an investment. And it's an investment that every, every business should take seriously. A lot of business owners could be a little older age-wise or whatever. They don't really see these things. They don't really understand these things. And then they don't know why their business is failing. And this is where we come in and we consult for them because we're young and we know these things. <laughs> said, you know, investing in photography is just as significant as in investing in the best quality of ingredients at a restaurant or proper operations or anything of that sort. And being able to share the product story visually helps with um, connecting with the consumer. And like I said, I'm going to say this again, uh, Shang's simple use of comedy for Google ads raised their engagement by 67%. Correct me if I'm wrong, it was 67%. Yes, which is a huge number. This is amazing. And this is just through the use of comedy. Which is a good thing. And he literally did that in the most simple, amazing manner. And I know it was a lot of hard work and I know I make it sound a lot simpler than it actually was. But to me, it's the end product that I saw, and it was beautiful, short, and it was like I was seeing my friend post a story, and it was amazing. I laughed, and I understood exactly what he was trying to say. He was trying to say, don't fool around, just ask Google. And okay, I will. Easy. Sold. I'm very sold on it. So whether the photos in, questions, uh, in question are headshots, um, are pictures of vehicles, or a beautifully created experience, the right kind of photography enhances a company's persona and uniqueness. Um, whether that's through dark humor, drama, music, or commercial photography. And um, like I said, Kind Associates' main goal is to always unify an existing strategy or develop a new one for any business that, look, that looks for it. So thank you guys for coming out today. <laughs> us. It really does mean a lot. We're very happy to be in Egypt doing something. Um, and thank you to the entire Photopia team that I met this year and everybody that I met at this event. You guys have made a huge impact on my life. So thank you so much. Really. Amazing. You're amazing. Uh, yeah. If anybody has questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you give us like an idea of like a case study or something that you guys did? general just to create like a strategy of what you described. Absolutely, and I can then, give you a client as an example. Uh, awesome, as a follow up to that, how did you use like different clients together? To sure, be about that sure, before? totally, okay. I'll use the same client and I'll answer both questions. So one of my clients has a car dealership in LA and as many might know or many might not know, we're kind of going into a recession. Car sales have been really slowed down. They're not really able to make money as easily as they used to. And so he called me in and he said, you know, like, this is what we're going through and I want to maximize our profits. I'm not really sure what it is that I can do. And so I really looked into their, you know, development, what they were doing already and things of that sort. I looked at their inventory and I found, like, really hot cars, like, really hot. And I was like, all right, give me those. Give me the keys to the McLaren. Give me the Rolls Royce. Give me this. Give me that. Anything over $150,000. I was like, give me all of those. I started with something else for him, um, and after you know really studying it and stuff, it's it's not fully accessible on the internet yet, but we do have clients already. It's called My BLK, and it's a luxury concierge service is what we did for him. And so now you can, because even though car sales have slowed down, tourism has it, and LA is a hot spot in the summer. So what we did was we started a luxury car rental service company for him, and then chauffeur services, because he has a lot of guys in the dealership that are not selling cars. So go ahead, drive around. Try something else. 
And so that's basically what we did. Now to really highlight those concierge services, we also connected him with a bunch of restaurants in LA that are really big restaurants that people want to go to. Some of them are our clients. And now it's like you can get on-demand reservations at like something like Barton G that you can't even get reservations to. And so that's what we did for him to kind of increase his profitability and allow him to make money while we're kind of like in a recession. And so now he's really excited about this. And the guys at his shop really harass me all the time when I go, not actually, but like, they always tell me like, we've been trying to convince him to do this for so long. Like, how did it take you one sitting that you convinced him and stuff? But really you just have to hit all the right nudges to convince your client to do something and tell them that you'll do it for them. Like, I will take it for you. Like, I will take the heat from A to Z. I will figure everything out, which is what we did. We did a lot of research. And then after that, he was convinced, and it's progressive. He's making a lot of money. Honestly, it was all the dollar signs he saw. Yeah, it, it really was. I mean, I mean, he was literally renting one car for like maybe a thousand dollars a day instead of letting it sit in the lot, and it's just getting gross and dirty, and it, it's just it's sad. It was really sad to go to his lot, and so because he had a huge, nice inventory, we were able to do this. And to answer your other questions, aside, uh, your other question, aside from you know the the restaurant thing that we did with them too for the the, the concierge services, say for instance you have a fashion line and I'm doing your marketing or something, and then in a conversation you tell me, okay, but I'm trying to go universal, right? And I don't have the shipping to do that, the the, the vendor, the right vendor. I have vendors that do shipping and distribution. So what I'll do is connect you with my vendors and then I'll let you deal with them business to business and get the best deal. That doesn't always work, of course, because sometimes your needs are just not met. And that's when we actually look for other clients or other people that can serve you. But our main priority is always from one of our clients to another one of our clients. It's business to business. It's always business to business because that's how you keep the economy going and that's how you keep everybody happy when everybody's making money. You're getting your things shipped, he's getting his bills paid, everyone's happy, and this is like one plus one in business. I just want to add one last thing is why we came here out for the photo week is the idea that we have a lot of talents out here in Egypt and we have a lot of culture, which they kind of like out, like out there and they lack it, they don't have the culture. So we do a lot of you know PR and events for restaurants and we invite some of LA artists in to showcase their work and whatnot. So what we what brought us here is the fact that we're trying to bridge. We have a lot of talents here, we have a lot of artists out here and we're trying to bridge businesses out there with businesses out here and artists out here with artists out there and keep it going both ways. So business to business but in, on an international level but now also artist to artist is what we're trying to do. Any other questions for anyone? Please. Um, okay, I got a lot to say, but I'm gonna try and okay. say it. Okay. Uh, it's funny that you showed the boxed water thing because uh, they also have smart water, mm -hmm. just in case you're gonna be smart and yeah. be more smart, <laughs> you don't want to be more smart. Um, you both seem like you're sharp. And you've done your research. You, uh, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be, you know, good at what you do. Thank you. But I'm, I'm personally highly skeptical of American consumer culture. Right. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, like for example, when I'm like, when I hear that, oh, in Egypt now Black Friday is a thing, mm -hmm. you know, this, I feel weird, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not part of our culture, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that oh, it's global now, internet, like, you know, everything's open. I get that. But like, for the example of like, the super size bean, you know, if the restaurant is bad for me, it's a bad experience, right. you know. Like, but like people, some people like a certain kind of lifestyle. Right extravaganza, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. But I feel like things over there, or like West versus East kind of conversation, um, maybe they, they're not like bad here, or maybe they're not affected here. Maybe things are problematic over there, and maybe they're not, they're okay here. You know, so how to sell there and sell here? Like, like good luck, honestly, bridging those, um, bridging like those two different it, I think it's a very controversial topic, and I definitely agree with you. Spe sorry, especially with art, because to me, like I feel like a lot of creatives here, and I get that you're you're coming from the business side of things. Mm -hmm. But for me, you know, like yeah, yeah uh, the platform, social media, the hyper visual, obviously, probably is super effective in convincing you to buy new stuff. But um, yeah, like the ethical thing, you know what I mean? Over there or over here? No, I mean everywhere. in general. 
Well, I guess we can't really get into ethics because we'll talk about that outside. <laughs> but I think I, I agree with you. I mean, the American consumers are different for sure. Um, and really, it varies. It varies on location. Like, your typical purchaser in Washington, D.C. is not your typical purchaser in Anaheim, California, and they're not your typical purchaser in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, they'll pay whatever it takes to get whatever they want. Um, in Anaheim, they might be a little more conservative, you know, like, am I really going to spend $7 for a water bottle? And then you go to Disneyland where you're paying like $200 just to get into the park and then you go in there and you're like, okay, I want water, $7. I want ice cream, $12. I want food, 20 bucks. It's like, dude, so what did I pay 20 bucks for? There were $200 for, like, I, I agree with you. It is, I mean, but that's how the economy works there realistically. And Barton G, I'm telling you, I think it's a one-time experience. I'm not, I never went back. Personally, I never went back. But I know a lot of people that do. And um, it's not that they serve huge amounts of food, because they don't, you know, they're, they're not wasteful, it's not, it's not what we're trying to say, but rather it's about the way they plate things and how they serve it to their client. It's a show. So they really invest in their people. So they don't come out normally. They're dressed up a certain way, like for that one drink with the cotton candy all around, whatever. People eat that. I mean, it's disgusting, but they do. <laughs> and so people do eat it. So I don't think it's wasteful necessarily because I think the amount of food that they serve is a normal amount, a normal portion. But is the amount of money you pay the same? No, you pay more because you're paying for the entire experience, for the show, for everything. And mind you, all the tables they're posting or whatever are the bigger tables, the blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's a, I mean, there are some tables that are literally like, just these two put together at Barton G because it's a tight place. It's not, and it's always fully packed and it's an occasional thing. Like people will go for like their birthdays or a date night or I mean, I think it's weird. I don't know why anybody would go there on a date night, but they do. And it, it's like the whole idea is to just give them something different. And I'm sure people do it here too. Like different businesses give like a different experience to people here just so you can feel that emotional connection to the business, right? And so that's what Barton G did but on like a monstrous scale. Like, you know, like you can't see the rest of the table because this is how big the plate is. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. But it's all about like the varnish to just make you feel like they did something. So um, they're progressive, they're doing good. They're opening se several locations. And so as much as I do understand your, you know, how controversial you feel about it, they're doing good. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I just want to touch on one point that you've mentioned is the difference in the culture and I think coming from an um, Egyptian background, that's what we're playing on is we understand people here. We come down every summer. We make sure we interact with all sorts of people every year we come and then we're always out there active. We go to different states. We live there. So we're always on the move. So we are playing on that factor is that we I know could not live most of the this. <laughs> well, at the same time, I could be a total California girl and no one would even notice it. So that, and they love the idea that we have culture here. For example, they in showcase a good set is a beautiful thing. They would love to see that. Be happy to show culture. I'm not us in English. I don't know culture. So much culture. So that's what we're playing on is the idea that we are both well, kind of, I would say, well cultured on both spectrums. So that's why we're able to communicate with, you know, people here and there and maybe be able to connect the two dots together. And just to, to add to that, that, we do have like huge talents here that really do show our culture. Um, we went to a showcase in LA, uh, Salma was actually with us, and we went to um, the Nadia Lee, if you're familiar with her. She's a photographer and uh, she did a showcase there. Now she's European, she's not American, and this was her first showcase there. And when I tell you it was like jam-packed, it was like actually jam-packed. Like everybody and their mom was there. From celebrities to normal people to creative director of Balenciaga to Gucci's I don't know what. Like literally everybody was there. I didn't know them. I just went for fun because someone wanted to go. <laughs> like I actually didn't know them. And so it was, it was like jam-packed. And that's just because, you know, people care about things that are different. So I can imagine if they did the said exhibition in the States, like, I can guarantee that everybody, and yeah, exactly what you just did. He did this. Yes. 
So literally everybody's brains would explode because we don't get to see these things very often. This is why we put so much money into the MOFA, the Museum of Far Fine Arts, or the MoMA, the Museum of Modern Arts, or any, you know, any museums in the States, if you go, they put so much money and development into it because it's always coming from abroad and they really do give people the appreciation they des deserve. And so that's just one of the reasons why this is something we're very interested in, other than our passion for art, of course. Um, Since Marco just came back, I just, I'm not going to thank you because if you weren't here, I just wanted to say thank you. I read that message all that paragraph I gave you. No, 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 we just want to say thank you and we're done. You weren't here. Thank you for having us. Thank you, thank you for Photo Week. Um, it was amazing. I come from a very far background. Uh, photography is, is, is new. It was new for me. This, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but photography was different and it's it was definitely an experience for me and I don't even like talks we like talks for love I am I was impressed so thank you for having us thank you so much for everyone thank you to your entire team really. of course I'm gonna tell them I need on stage to tell you talk Bashkurku they approached us through Selma Thank you, Salman Keshe. Right. And uh, it's a great introduction. I hope that you expand more in Egypt. And, and I hope that this amazing caliber of creatives, Yani Kuno, they inspired you and you inspired them during the networking. So I'm really happy. This is a little small token. Thank you, Thank you so much. We hope to see you more in Egypt. Definitely. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for And thank you for sponsoring the Egypt. Thank you.